Hi, I am Hilal Alam from Al Zebra. Here today we are to discuss about the worst design catastrophes in 2022. Hi, we have come to the end of 2022. As usual, this year too saw the design errors and failures based on them. Though many have occurred, I have given concisely in structural failures of bridges and a dam, major railroad accidents, shipwrecks and air crashes briefly. I have barely scratched the surface here. Come let's begin with air crashes. About 19 major aviation accidents and about 26 military aircraft accidents have happened this year. However, most of them were due to various other reasons. Design based errors were not reported yet. But a Korean Air suffered a design failure at its braking system. Let us see what really happened. On 23rd October, Korean Air 631 from Seoul prepared to land at Macton Cebu Runway 22 at 10 12 pm local time. It was not successful. At 10 26 pm, second attempt 2 was unsuccessful. Approximately after 13 minutes, at the third attempt, it successfully touched down at 11 8 pm. But it was not unable to stop on the runway and it hit an instrument landing system array before stopping 300 meters beyond the runway threshold. However, no fatality or injuries reported. On 24th October, it was found that a hydraulic failure had caused the failure of brakes on the aircraft, but it's still unconfirmed. On 25th, the next day, the captain of the flight gave testimony that they suffered a hard touchdown on the second attempt due to wind shear forcing them down. During the following go around, a warning light of braking systems light up. On the third landing attempts, a warning light regarding the pressure of brakes light up and hence pilot could not slow down the aircraft. Did the hard touchdown cause the failure? Rails Though not much information about design-based failures are available for rails, there's one here, the Baikonur Guwahati Express derailment. One of the traction motors fell off the locomotive, prompted the driver to apply the emergency brakes to the speeding train. This sudden halt derailed lost two assemblies of the locomotives. The final report revealed that locomotives skipped numerous inspections. It must be inspected every 4,500 km, but ill fated locomotive was running 16,000 km continuously without any maintenance. The design failure of the motor fixture exposed the maintenance issue of the locomotive. An interesting catch. Let's move on to the marine. Out of 240 shipwrecks, major and minor happened this year. Some were due to war attacks, some poor maintenance, some illegals, and few design based failures. On 2nd September, 160 foot MY007, the James Bond team super yacht, sank off the coast of Greece in Aegean Sea after the depth finder failed and she scrapped the bottom. She partially rolled over and sank with her port side on the bottom and half of the hull remaining above the waterline. Five rescued, 10 missing. Now let's talk about structural failures of bridges and dams. The Georgia Fontaine mine is currently the deepest hand excavated hole in the world. On September 11, the dam wall collapsed due to a structural failure. About 9 houses were swept away by the mudslide and more than 20 damaged, displacing 1000 people. Nemiga Pedestrian Bridge a part of the pedestrian bridge collapsed beginning of this year in the city center of Minsk, Belarus. The bridge across Nemiga Street in Minsk collapsed on the night of 8th of January. The reason of failure is attributed to fatigue due to the metro load nearby and thermal fluctuation. Earlier in 2017, the Shulovsky Bridge in Kyiv, Ukraine met a similar fate. Beware. Thermal fluctuation adds to the fatigue of structures. Mm -hmm. 
Kwang Jong Ipog Building. On 11th January, Kwang Jong Ipog in Kwangju, South Jola collapsed. The exterior wall of the apartment building collapsed 10 months before the completion. One construction worker was found dead and five was still missing. This shows Korea is still stuck in a quagmire of subpar construction. Let's look at the cause of Kwang Jong Ipod collapse. Poor concrete work, poor supervision, insufficient safety training and excessive corner cutting are considered the causes. But there's only one fundamental cause that triggers all the reasons. There's lowest bidding system. In fact, the building is a part of an IPOC apartment complex being built by Hyundai Development Co. Twenty eighth January. It was still pitch dark in Pittsburgh. The neighbors heard a loud noise in the early morning. The four hundred forty seven foot Fern Hollow Bridge had collapsed. The long standing centerpiece began to sink below when a Port Authority 61B bus was still crossing. In total, nine people in six vehicles collapsed with the bridge. Earlier, a major corrosion was posted by a passerby in the social media that went viral. 2. Norway has a long tradition of building timber bridges across rivers. The country has embarked on a new era of larger road bridges in 1990s. The 196-meter Flissa Bridge, open for traffic roads in 2003, is the world's longest timber bridge. In 2016, Percolo Bridge, another timber crossing in Goodbrandstolen, collapsed under the weight of a timber truck. It's another interesting engineering problem similar to Hayat Wakwi collapse. According to a 2017 report, the failure of the bridge was blamed on a design engineer misreading the transfer of forces in the joint. We will discuss about it on a forthcoming episode. Now let us focus on Triton Bridge which collapsed this year. In August morning, a car plunged into the river while a lorry got stranded when Triton Bridge in the valley broke apart while two vehicles crossed this 150 meter long bridge. Six years later, in Good Brad Sterling, the significant overload caused the collapse of this 10 years old bridge according to the preliminary investigation. Why did the timber and steel stress bridge fail so dramatically? According to the Norway Safety Investigation Authority's preliminary investigation, the collapse was caused by a break in one of the diagonals in the main span towards the Western River Foundation. The report goes on like this. The fracture form is identified as a block shear failure between the wooden part and steel at the junction. This is a momentary form of failure that causes overloading of other elements in the truss upon subsequent loading and then with the collapse of the river as a result. It's not clear yet if fatigue reduced the capacity of the bridge, but the investigation have not revealed any sign of reduction in the bridge's capacity as a result of rot or corrosion. Richard Fish, an independent bridge management consultant, said one area of potential concern with the Triton Bridge could be the transition and connection between the timber and steel section. This is somewhat similar to the failure of Morbi Bridge in Gujarat, which was likely to have suffered severe damage at the joint of the vertical suspension cable and the deck. I have given the link of Morbi Bridge collapse below. With this, 